At first thought, it's bananas that a band with such a silly name could go so far. Even Bananarama's founding members, Karen Woodward and Sarah Dellen, think so. They pinch themselves that 40 years on from teaming up, they're still together and still performing. But actually, Bananarama's success is not nuts at all. What it is, is having the talent to make some of Pop's most memorable songs, combined with the energy needed to smash through the music industry's glass ceiling. Welcome to the home of British music, a little alley in London's West End, where many pop and rock greats have lived, worked and played. David Bowie and Jimi Hendrix, yeah, the Stones, everyone, I think. Elton, Rod. I think Among the stars etched here in history slowly, are Sarah Dallin and Karen Woodward, <laughs> who four decades ago called this place home. It was painted grey, wasn't it? Yeah. Everything was grey, including the mould. <laughs> Their mouldy crash pad above the Sex Pistols' old rehearsal room was where Banana Rama was born. What if we can move back in? <laughs> it was free of charge. But it was an absolute hovel. No hot water, the roof was dripping. But the, yeah. whatever the conditions, we were happy living there. KFC just Ooh. round the corner. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's not to like? <laughs> Perhaps their happiness had something to do with their remarkable rise to the top. In the male-dominated music scene of the 80s, Banana Rama well and truly broke ranks producing some of the most memorable hits of our time and releasing more charting singles than any female band in history. And from day one, Sarah and Karen clearly fit the pop star part. Over the years, they've had stints as a trio, starting out with Siobhan Fade. and then Jackie O'Sullivan. But Karen and Sarah have always seen their band as the work of two childhood friends. We went to the same schools from, from age four and I went to her house one day and just, you know, in a sort of child, childlike way, <laughs> we, we took a compass and pricked our fingers and did the old, we'll be friends forever type thing. So, yeah, and we definitely have. <laughs> Do you think that terrific bond that you two have is what's kept Banana Rama going? Yeah, to actually be able to share all that with your best friend is quite remarkable. We've had an almost 40 year career together, so that's that's quite unusual, I think. <laughs> I think it's very, very unusual. unusual. <laughs> yeah. To the pop group Banana Rama. Well, I've known Sarah for ages, and we were on the dolls, so we weren't really going anywhere. When you go right back to the very beginning, and can you imagine in your wildest dreams thinking that, that all these years later you'd still be talking about Banana Rama? Well, it started in 81, Banana Rama, um, and I think we were signed as a novelty act. Being female, I don't think anyone saw any sort of great plan for us. But I don't uh, suppose it helped that the first single was in Swahili. Yeah, and we sang it in <laughs> it's Swahili, a bit, so that difficult. wasn't a, a big boost, was it? <laughs> Maybe if I can put forward a suggestion, is it something in the name? Is that the reason that people haven't taken you seriously over the years? I mean, well, it could be. It could be. <laughs> that was picked right at the beginning and it just sort of stuck. And I think if we thought we were going to have a career of almost 40 years, we might have got something a little different. Who picked it, Kieran? She did. <laughs> <laughs> well, we loved Roxy Music and they had a song called Pajama Rama. So teenagers, we thought, oh, bananas, that's tropical. Let's put Banana Rama, Pajama yes. Rama. <laughs> anyway, it's memorable. It's memorable, <laughs> certainly. I'm a bit toppy. Yeah, Pete. Pete, Pete, I'm a bit bottomy. Comedians Dawn French and Jennifer Saunders certainly saw the funny side in their name. So, Lana Nini Nunu, you've been promoting a new single. And their attitude. We've been working really hard today. Yeah. And you come in, it's just like one more thing to do. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think... What was uh, French and Saunders' name for the band? It was Lana... Lana Nini Nunu. 
When people start taking the mickey out of you, you know you've really made it. We loved it. I thought it was great, and absolutely, it's the, the highest mean, it's, form of it's flattery. It's a slight really. exaggeration, <laughs> but it pretty much hit the nail on the head of how we were. <laughs> and all that with, who hey, else? Well, I'm not going outside. If you want to do it, I'll have to come in here. And it was, it was oh, God, one more thing. Help! No, wait. Sorry. One... True to their playful spirit, Help! Sarah and Karen jumped at the chance to join forces with French and Saunders, recording this rendition of the Beatles classic for mega charity Comic Relief. Can't you be? But it wouldn't be the first or last time they'd be called on to help raise money for good. In November 1984, friend and legendary musician Bob Geldof made a momentous demand. And he called our manager and said, get the girls down, probably used an expletive as well. <laughs> <laughs> get I the girls down so. to the studio, I'm making a record, it's a charity record, and that's all we knew. So it was a Sunday morning and we'd been out all night the night before, so we rocked up. And I saw Sting walking down the street and then I saw Bono and I saw Duran Duran and it was like, wow, this is something pr pretty big. And big it was. Rubbing shoulders with the best in the business, Banana Rama joined the star-studded lineup known as Band-Aid. Recorded in a single day, their one-hit wonder, Do They Know It's Christmas, quickly hit the top of the charts, raising more than $350 million for famine relief in Ethiopia. It's still one of Sarah and Karen's most memorable career moments, even if, on the day, they weren't all there. You look so young there, it's, it's amazing. So young, so hungover. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was. <laughs> Terrible. Karen's there with a cup of I've tea and cigarette. I've got a cup cigarette. of tea and a cigarette. <laughs> with my hair just scraped back in a ponytail. I've probably got the makeup on from the night before. Honestly, I... I mean, that is the difference I now. Know. We had no stylists or makeup artists. No, or... I cared. didn't really care at the time. Nobody but looking cared. back, I just sort of think Nobody I could cares. have made it, an it's effort. It's changed now. It's a little tepid. Mm. As long as it melts a sugar lump, I don't care. These days, tea now. tends to come without the hangover. Is that how? How very yeah. civilised. It's mm. almost like we've grown up, sir. While Sarah and Karen still spend much of their time together, well. it's rare they share a quiet moment like this. Very hot. <laughs> In my jacket. Look, have, you, have you cold tea? Yeah. I'll call <laughs> you down. down. <laughs> because they're still hard at work, writing, performing, and travelling when they can to share their music with the world. They even paid Australia a visit just last year. I do have one issue to raise with you two. Do you? That sounds serious. Well, it is, it is serious. <laughs> oh, no. I know we're all getting older, and, you know, generally speaking, women sometimes have a tougher time of that ageing process. But you have managed to describe that journey into menopause as the tubby Australian tour. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's when we suddenly realised that yes. all the tops we were putting on, all the stage clothes, it was like, can, that's can a bit you tight. Up with what's, this? what's going on? It's all a bit tight. It's like, why are we so tubby <laughs> around the waist? What's going on? Like, oh, that's what yeah. it is. And that's why we nicknamed it that. The tubby Australian tour. In an affectionate way. <laughs> oh, so we shouldn't take personal offence. No! It wasn't Australia's <laughs> fault that we got tubby. <laughs> <laughs> we were tubby when we got there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I can't say as I'm qualified to discuss it with you in detail anyway, so... But I suppose it's been a bit of a taboo subject. A few years ago, no-one talked about it, and now you just can't get away from it over here. It's like everything is menopause no, this, good. menopause That's that. That's good. Which is... It's good. Because I know the entertainment industry generally is often accused of being sexist, chauvinistic. Have you two noticed big changes since you first started out? It's very much a boys club. Um, it certainly was when we started and I, I imagine prior to that. And it still to some extent is. And I think it should change. I just, I'd, I'd hate the way women are sidelined. Oh, you're too young, you're too old, you're too fat, you're too thin, you're too this. It's, it's just nonsense. I don't suppose when 
sort of Mick Jagger hit his 50s, everyone said, oh, you better pack it in, Mick. But I, I think there's a different thing for girls. I mean, some of the comments that were made when we were much younger, you know, like, oh, I'm not sure we'll put them on the playlist because, you know, they're both 30-year-old mothers, mothers now and that's not really our demographic. I would like to think that side of things has maybe changed now. I think you might be allowed to have a child and be over 30 and still have some sort of career. This is just one of the many topics Sarah and Karen tackle in their new memoir, Really Saying Something. Look how happy we are. Having sold more than 30 million records, Banana Rama's stamina in an ever fickle industry is success worth celebrating. And through breakups, makeups, children, and fashion trends, they've stayed side by side every step of the way. No one could replace Karen because no. she has been there for so long and all our memories are kind of shared. It's almost beyond having a marriage or a relationship, it, the, the, the enduring friendship thing. It's sort of, you know, it'll always be there. It's not likely to go wrong now, I don't think. <laughs> That's the understatement. When, it, when we, see, we see two old ladies doing <laughs> stuff and we think that'll be us. Older ladies. Two, two older, <laughs> la even older ladies <laughs> having a laugh or sort of walking along with their shopping trolleys <laughs> giggling and we, we always think well, that'll be us, won't yeah. it? Whatever happens, we'll always have each other. Well, we'll have to build a specific aged care facility for you. <laughs> <laughs> it better be fun. <laughs> Hello, I'm Liam Bartlett. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.